Imagine a mermaid laying down on a seashore. You can see her human upper body, which at her hips slowly transforms into a fish tail. It's easy to imagine since mermaids have been present in Western culture for a very long time. Now, imagine an inverted mermaid. It's awkward. René Magritte painted this in 1934 and called it collective invention. By doing so, he's showing that sometimes we assimilate absurd things. Why is the mermaid fine but Magritte's creature weird, when both are just a combination of two different animals? This is exactly the kind of thought Magritte tried to spark in his audience's mind. If you look at the way he's painting, you'll quickly realize that he doesn't really have any style, and that's exactly what he wanted. Magritte thought that style would only be a distraction to the viewer. What he really wanted to do was to create philosophical pieces that were easily understood, but that challenged the viewer. The colors he used and the compositions he made were extremely simple, but the real interest in Magritte's art is the idea behind the painting. Just like in Collective Invention, Magritte provokes thoughts by combining conflicting elements, sometimes even creating paradoxes. One of them is The Empire of Light, a series of 17 paintings painted between 1949 and 1954. Magritte was extremely inspired by poetry, and he even said that the function of painting is to make poetry visible. The poem Walrus and the Carpenter by Lewis Carroll, published in 1871, could have been an inspiration to Magritte. Here's how it starts. The sun was shining on the sea, shining with all his might. He did his very best to make the billows smooth and bright. And this was odd, because it was the middle of the night. It certainly is very strange. In this version, painted in 1954, we see a house lit up by a street lamp. Light only comes out of two of the windows, which can make us assume that the residents of this house are about to go to bed. It's dusk, and it's very calming. The sky, with its pastel blue color and its floating puffy clouds, is also very calming. But combined together, the meditative feeling from both parts of the painting cancel each other out. Instead of feeling calm, we feel uneasy. Something is wrong with the lighting. It goes against our instincts. It's really hard to interpret the meaning of this combination of night and day. Some have theorized that the sky could be the world of dreams, and as people are sleeping, this world lights up. Magritte was a surrealist, and the exploration of dreams was extremely important in the surrealist art movement. The painting could also be representing the duality of light, natural and artificial, which would explain the title The Empire of Light, which was chosen by Paul Nuget, a Belgian poet. The truth is, there's no way of knowing what it really means. Magritte said it himself, My painting is visible images which conceal nothing. They evoke mystery and, indeed, when one sees one of my pictures, one asks oneself this simple question. What does that mean? It does not mean anything, because mystery means nothing either. It is unknowable. Magritte was a thinker, and his goal was to make you think. So no matter what your interpretation of the painting is, if it made you think, Magritte's goal was reached. Finally, to add to your reflection, here's a similar work painted in 1958 titled Le Salon de Dieu, or God's Room. Here, night and day are inverted, and the title has a religious element. What does it mean? Nothing, would say Magritte, but that's hard to believe, isn't it? <laughs>